Hi everyone, welcome back to Mayor Time. Today I have with me watch collector, watch dealer, and watch brand distributor in from Los Angeles, Stephen Rostovsky. Stephen, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, George. Pleasure to be here. So while Stephen and I are both very much involved in the business side of the industry, oftentimes the conversations we have are just us sharing in the passion that we have for the incredible pieces that we're fortunate to see every day, and I think today will be another one. Stephen is the man who really first introduced me to independent watch brands. Uh, he was into F.P. Journe before Watchbox existed, before Govberg was an authorized retailer, um, before the brand was hot, you know, when it was back 10 years ago trading for 50% off retail. Uh, and he was also the guy who told me that D. Bethune and Grubel Forzi were two of the most undervalued brands in the industry. So much so, he believed in them so much so, that he became the distributor for both of them uh, in the United States. I want to find out, you know, what, what exposed you to those brands and how did you become interested in them and involved in them to the point that you wanted to distribute them? For me, I appreciate a watch for the beauty of the watch, the art, the, the craftsmanship. And when I saw those watches, I started collecting watches, George, about 30 years ago. I was in the software business before I started this as my second career, which is a pleasure for me every single day of my life. You know the saying, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And we have fun every day, you and I together as well. And I just appreciated the craftsmanship, the artistic value, uh, the quality of the finishing, and fell in love with each one as I saw them. In fact, I learned about De Bethune for the first time in Basel World, maybe in 2004 or five, and the same, Grubel Forzi, maybe the same year or close to one another. <clears throat> De Bethune was showing the, 30, uh, the um, DB15 perpetual calendar with the revolving moon phase, which is a pattern to the company. Loved that watch. Uh, started to appreciate the brand and Grubel Forzi, of course, with their first invention, the 30 degree double tourbillon in the vision, which we have here today as well, they launched that in 2004. So for me, it's not about what other people like and what other people appreciate and what other people are chasing, it's about what appeals to me. Right. And I recommend that to collectors all the time, buy what you love and if you enjoy it and you wear it and have fun with it, that should be the most important factor. Right. Yeah, you've never been blinded by branding and you've always had an appreciation for fine watchmaking and intrinsic value. And it wasn't until recently that D. Bethune started to get hot and you told me it would. You uh, definitely told me it would. And, uh, you know, it won the GPHG back in uh, 2011, the, the Aguidor with the DB28, and now just won uh, Best Turbion 10 years later. And uh, we have a DB28 Turbion here, a special piece unique with a black lacquer uh, dial. Tell us, tell us about this particular piece and why it's so special. So this is the DB28, which has the flexible lugs, which is another pattern from the company, spring-loaded flexible lugs, which D, uh, D. Bethune launched in, now in the DB28 line, but in fact the first watch to have the flexible lugs was the DB26, which was the same as movement that's in the DB15, perpetual calendar hand wind. But this particular piece is uh, titanium, high, uh, grade five, high polished titanium, which is something that the company specialized in from the early days uh, and have really done a great job working with this material. The tourbillon is an ultralight, as you said, tourbillon, 30 second rotation, so it's a fast moving tourbillon. Just beautiful, easy to wear, comfortable on the wrist. Was originally launched with either short lugs or long lugs. This particular example has the long lugs. And as you know, De Bethune as a company has really worked very well with titanium and tried to create different tones of titanium through a heating process. So it's been many years that uh, De Bethune, many companies uh, have watches with uh, blued hands, blued steel hands, which are heated. The ball moon phase, in fact, is half platinum and half titanium. The titanium is heated to get the blue effect, which is your night and your full and, and no moon, of course. And then more recently, D. Bethune created a process where during the heating uh, cycle, the titanium goes yellow before it becomes blue. So we've launched a few pieces, as you know, the yellow tones, mm -hmm. DB28 yellow tones, and then more recently, the yellow submarine, the sports watch. Right, and then you have the blue titanium pieces too. Yes, of course. Cut the kind of blue, kind of gold with the gold bezel, uh, kind of zed, I think you call it, with the zirconia bezel. Zirconia Those bezel. are all uh, fantastic watches. And then you have another tourbillon from your uh, personal collection uh, with some blue sapphire in it. Um, I think that would be cool for 
um, our, our audience to see that one. I know that's one of your favorite personal pieces. Love this watch. I excuse the strap. It's one of my own designs, not from the factory, but I think it matches perfectly <laughs> with a watch. Uh, again, this is the steel wheels, uh, tourbillon with a sapphire bridge, the delta bridge, which is another um, DNA specific to the brand, the DNA of the delta bridge. Same tourbillon that you saw over there. And more recently, in the last three or four years, uh, De Bethune as a company decided to move away from the option of short and long lugs. We made the medium lugs and accentuated the bullets on the end, which is part of the DNA from the original DB15 and some of the original DB1, 2, 3, 12s, as you know. So yes, this is one of my favorites. Easy to wear, a little difficult to read, but again, as I said in the beginning, we buy these things not necessarily to tell time, but for the enjoyment of what it is. Right. And you really need to get a DB28 on your wrist if you haven't uh, previously, because it hugs it so well, regardless of what uh, size wrist you have. And it's just so incredibly comfortable. I mean, the wearability rivals that of really anything, I think. And there's a lot of nice watches out there that just don't sit well. You know, they're, they're, they're top heavy. They're, they, they lie awkwardly on, on the wrist. They don't taper. Um, and that's certainly not the case with, with, the DB, with the DB28. Especially for such a large watch, 44 millimeters in diameter with longer legs. It really wraps the wrist, fits very comfortably, extra light in titanium. And I, I remember looking at uh, Richard Mille when they first launched many, many years ago. Uh, love them or hate them, they were always one of the most comfortable watches mm -hmm. to wear. Yes. And I think the same applies to the DB28. Easy, comfortable, light, beautiful piece to enjoy. Right. And then another line that Debethun makes is the DB25 line. More classic. And, they, and uh, these don't have flexible lugs. However, they still have signature Debethun lugs, I would say. Um, I've got my personal rose gold starry various that uh, I love tremendously. My latest pickup, I've been wearing it nonstop. And here we have Thank a- Thank you for uh, that, yes. lucky, lucky you for owning one. <laughs> yes, I remember you told me that you think it's the single nicest watch made below 100,000 retail. That's and, true. And uh, for you to say something like that is, is a, you know, a bold statement and uh, it says something with all the cool watches that you've been uh, exposed to in, in your career. If so. I may, when the starry various was first launched, the titanium version, you have the rose gold version on your wrist. The titanium version was launched, and yes, uh, I see many, many watches on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and it was launched at 66,000 US dollars, and I honestly felt under 100,000 in 10 years, I hadn't seen something more beautiful. Amazing. Gorgeous dial um, with the, the, the sky, with little gold dots for each piece, handmade, beautiful piece, and comfortable. And something else that also that's very cool about it is you can customize the sky chart. That is, is showing. So, that is uh, this is the standard dial that I have, but uh, the factory is going to be nice enough to uh, make a dial for me that is the sky um, that it was uh, that was showing when I had uh, when my twins were born ah. uh, on March March twenty second. So that's going to be uh, really special. That's when a good I, celebration. That on. So In that'll fact, certainly I, be a sentimental piece for me. I have one on order for myself from my personal collection. And the date that they're going to create the sky chart is the date that we acquired the company or 51% of the company in, because um, I was a factory owner as well, in 2017. So that's going to be my celebratory watch. Nice. Not I as special as the twin girls. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Nothing beats that. No. So here we have a very cool, I think another piece unique, potentially, um, but Jade Dial uh, Snake DB25. Uh, talk about this particular piece seeing it for the first time, <laughs> but I will talk about it. The gorgeous hand engraved snake hands for the hours and minutes. I believe that the um, snake head is the hours and the tail are the minutes, correct? And engraved numerals for all of your indicators, one through 12. Again, unique, beautiful, as you said, jade dial. I know they made a 20 piece edition with a gold colored dial. 44 millimeter case diameter in white gold high polish movement on the back, gorgeous. Yes, and what's interesting is uh, you can tell that this is a Debethune and you can tell that the DB28 is Debethune. They both fall under the brand DNA, but they're so different. I mean, yes. crazy different. Um, and I think that that's a cool aspect of the brand, how you can recognize that they are a Debethune without seeing the brand name on, on the dial. And cool. again, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. that's uh, within the motto of the company. That is to respect and honor traditional watchmaking. And your DB25 line is more traditional than your DB28. But also to think to the future and to have a more futuristic, modern appeal to the, to the, for the collector. 
So uh, I oftentimes joke with Stephen, um, and it's all out of love, of course. You know, they say imitation is the uh, sincerest form of flattery. So uh, obviously he has this South African accent, and uh, recently he says to me, and I thought it was great, and it's so true, even today as the watch market's hot and independent brands are, are strengthening, he said to me, George, did you see the latest results at the auction? Everyone's chasing the same watches. I don't get it. They're paying these crazy premiums. And then there's, there's these certain watches. A GP Triple Bridge Turbion brought 40,000. George, that watch is amazing. How are people overlooking that? And even today, you know, watches are being overlooked and you were never that guy, really. And that's how you got into these, these independent brands early. And so I brought out a watch that, um, you know, we talked yesterday about a, a, a uh, Gerard Perigo Constant Force uh, escapement watch that um, won the GPHG, I believe, and we were selling one for 30 cents on the dollar. And here we have a uh, Glashut Original Platinum Turbion Retrograde Date Power Reserve Indicator. This watch retailed for, I think, 130000 We're offering it for sale right now for 30000 And you see what some pieces are going for. And it's amazing. I mean, talk about how just just some some watches uh, are are an unbelievable intrinsic value today, and people just are, uh, you know this is gorgeous too, and and it's wearable. Yet in house movement, and but but people it's just not uh, in vogue. Or I mean, uh, talk about you know what what you see and and why you were telling me that you think watches are being so overlooked. Certain pieces. Well, again, so true. Beautiful watch, nice complications, power reserve date. Uh, hours and minutes, of course, Turbion, well made, well finished from a great manufacturer, and yet everybody wants the same stuff, and they're willing to pay for the same stuff, and it, it worries me, to be honest with you, a little bit that the marketplace has become one where the passionate watch collector has been pushed aside. It's not so much fun anymore for them to try to get the things that they want and enjoy. You're seeing it now with De Bethune and some of the other independents, F. P. Jean, of course, Richard Mille, <clears throat> and the investors have come into the game. And so everybody's chasing the same watches, they're pushing them to crazy prices, and they don't really have the, the eye or the passion for some of the beauty that we can appreciate. And yes, after being a collector now for almost 30 years and being in the business for almost 20 years, I start looking at watches now with a different eye. I look and appreciate what I think the value is, and it has nothing to do with what other people are asking or what the retail price may be. I just have an idea for what I think that that watch should be worth. Right. And f as a follow-up from that, it's nice to see now, over the last year, year and a half, that certain watches that are so beautiful and classic and clean and, and, and timeless are starting to be appreciated. Right. Some of the early Roger de Bouis, some of the early Daniel Roths, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that were overlooked even six months ago, nine months ago. Right. And people are starting to appreciate the beauty and the value in those watches. Mm -hmm. Well, one watch that uh, we were looking at earlier and decided to bring on here today is this Audemars Piguet uh, Minute Repeater Turbion uh, Chronograph, chronograph. <laughs> which, uh, you know, I think we're offering it for sale for below 200000 And you were saying, you know, wh what would that tr trade for or bring if it was in a Royal Oak case? And um, retail. <laughs> and, the re and the retail price is... 600,000. Right, I would believe so, yeah. So the complication is there, the quality is there, the movement is there, but just because the case is not in vogue, mm -hmm. right. there's not the same appreciation. Right. And you're seeing stainless steel uh, Royal Oaks that retail for 20 something selling for sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. And possibly that's because they're recognizable mm -hmm. and it's a status symbol for mm -hmm. many and they're chasing that and not appreciating the beauty that went into this watch with all of the complications. Buy, buy metal. Yes. A, 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 applied Arabic numerals. Great uh, sound. We, we awesome ran them through the yeah, let's, let's, uh, a little let's bit. Let's activate We can listen. Yeah. But yes, yeah. beautiful, sounds great, clean, crisp, great quality, and but look, not an invoke case. Right. That's all it is. And um, if it was in a different case, in, in steel, let alone precious metals, it would be 3x the price, um, at least. So um, it's interesting seeing the, the inefficiencies in, in the market still, while it's uh, as, strong, as strong as it is today. But it goes back to what you started, your opening statement, talking about independent watchmaking when it was not in fashion. 
and talking about an appreciation for just the beauty and the craftsmanship and the workmanship that goes into it, the finishing. And on the one hand, this watch should be as appreciated as the Royal Oak, similar, a similar movement, but just because the case is different and it appeals to a different kind of, I don't even want to say collector anymore, a different kind of buyer, there's a different value proposition. Right. No. Yeah, very true. Um, it's a good segue into um, another minute repeater, which is just such an amazing piece that uh, had to bring it on today. One of my favorite watches ever made. Uh, I would argue one of the nicest watches ever made. Uh, here we have a single button chrono, minute repeater, instantaneous perpetual from Patek Philippe. And I've always said that I thought uh, Patek minute repeaters are the best. I think Patek their best watches are the best, or certainly, you know, in, in the in that league. Um, let's chime this minute repeater so people can hear this one. Amazing. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Incredible. Um, but, <laughs> but I got a, one, one more uh, imitation here. So another one that uh, has stuck with me for forever, which will be a nice segue into, into Grubel Forzi, is um, I mentioned to Stephen in, in one of the many combos we've had over the years, I said, Paddock is in a, a league of its own when it comes to, to minute repeaters. Um, and Stephen then said to me, he says, you know something, George? I would agree with you and say that when uh, Patek Philippe is a 10 on the scale for minute repeaters and everything else is a 7, that is until I heard the Grubel seven Forzi. 7 or below. 7 or below. Yes. Uh, the Grubel Forzi, when I heard that, that became the 10 and the Patek Philippe dropped to the 7. It's that good. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have uh, a sonnery here to, to listen to. And I know uh, uh, you have one back in, back in California. But um, let's talk about Grubel. And I think it's uh, still a brand today. I mean, Bethune started to uh, get some uh, strong recognition, winning awards, and, and the market has uh, started to take off. But Grubel, still not so much. I mean, they traded a, at a significant discount. And you tell me that you think that they're the nicest watches in the world. Um, Be best made watches, in my opinion. Yeah. And going back to your comment about the GPHG, uh, you know, they, win, they won the Golden Hand twice already, Grubel Forzi. And for the Grand Sonnery, they won the award. And I believe, I'm trying to remember correctly, but even for the QP, but everything that they do, you know, 400 to 500 hours of hand finishing that goes into every watch. And the Handmade One, which is a release from 2020, uh, several thousand hours go into making that. 96% of the watch is handmade. Right. Components, springs, the strap. spaces, straps, <laughs> buckles, everything. Uh, and the rest, you know, obviously the rest of the watches are beautifully finished as well, 400 to 500, but that's hand finishing, not handmade, everything. So yes, uh, this watch, the 30 degree double tourbillon. Um, first watch ever made. First by watch made by uh, Grubel Forzi. I bought a piece for myself in 2007. I still have it today. And in fact, I was asked this question earlier by some of your people, how often do you have to service a watch? Most Swiss manufacturers say three to five years. I tend to service them when they need service. This, this watch of mine is still running probably better than any watch I own 14 years later. I bought it in November of 2007. Uh, the finishing on the, on the movement plates is an old English style finishing and interestingly when I first started enjoying the watches and presenting them to people, they felt that this was a cheaper wear finishing because there was not the Cote de Genève or the uh, interesting finishes. Interesting. But this is all hand hammered and done with, the machine, with, actually with steel wool and there's no hiding from any blemishes. So this is actually much more difficult to accomplish. The Anglage or the uh, Tim could probably talk a little bit better than me. I enjoy it really more so about the visual impact, and he's much more technical than I am. But beautifully finished. The, the double tourbillon, as you see in the center of the watch, there's two tourbillons. The, the angle is a 60 second tourbillon, and then the cage around it is a four minute cage. So the angle moves over a four minute rotation. And to me, I look at this watch, which was launched uh, 17 years ago, and it's still today. Gorgeous. Blued steel screws on the dial, blued steel hands. Beautiful right. finishing. There's several different versions of this, I believe, correct? And they're all yes. gorgeous. 
Um, I think there's what? There's a uh, white gold with... Uh, white gold, two dial options, mm -hmm. rose gold, two dial options, and then a platinum with a mother of pearl dial. And then they ended the production of the run and made 11 in platinum and 11 in rose gold with a slightly different finish. And a total of 180-something, 186 if I remember correctly, was the total caliber production over a 10-year period. And then this also special piece, the first time ever that they did the infinity engraving on the case. Yeah, that, no, that watch is awesome. And, um, you know, look, they don't come cheap, that's for sure. But um, the, the people who uh, eventually get a Grubel 4Z, they all love it. I've yet to have anyone tell me they're disappointed in any way, shape, or form when they, when they got a group of 4Z. Uh, that's for sure. So we have a couple other ones here, um, which I'm sure people would like to, to see and, and have you uh, talk about. Here we have the Signature One, which this is one of my favorites. Um, talk about uh, this particular piece. This is a platinum version of the Signature One. Uh, and Signature One is to honor a watchmaker that had been with a company and contributed towards the success of the company. And this one honors Didier Cretin in the back. It has his name engraved, but it is still a Grubel 4Z watch with the Grubel 4Z on the, on the dial and on the crown engraved. This is the first time that uh, Grubel 4Z made a watch under 43 millimeters. So this one I believe is 41 millimeters, 41 and change. I'm trying to remember, I'm getting old, <laughs> all these details. Uh, single balance wheel, large, with a beautiful beat, and finished with the same three-dimensional impact and effect that most Grubel 4Z watches have. Most of the dial is not dial, most of it is movement plates. Just a gorgeous piece. 11, 33 were made in stainless steel, three different color combinations. Uh, blue, stainless steel with a blue, blue dial, stainless steel with a black dial, and stainless steel with gold plates and a black dial. And then 11 in ro red gold, 11 in white gold, and 11 in platinum. Uh, 66 in total, a true collector's piece, being really well appreciated in the, in the marketplace. And I believe long run, this could be the simplicity, the Philippe Dufour simplicity of the Grubel 4Z world. I like that comparison. No, I, it's one of my favorites for sure. And the watch that's really taken the brand to a, another level and sold really well, uh, because look, sports watches are in now, it's, it's all the rage, is the watch on your wrist. And I mean, there's the, there's the Balenci AS that you came out with, which, um, what was it, 18 pieces in uh, blue, blue 18, 18 pieces silver. In, in silver. Um, sold that really well mm -hmm. and uh, unbelievably comfortable on the wrist, like a concave case, lies really well, um, just fun to look at and, and watch operate. And now you're doing the uh, GMT Sport. Um, and I know you did the titanium, titanium on a bracelet. The bracelet's amazing. Um, uh, I just sold one to, to a huge collector who has a, a many, di many different uh, awesome pieces and he told me it could be his single favorite watch and that it, the wearability is RM level, um, D Bethune level, um, as good as it gets. Um, so talk about uh, that piece that you have on your wrist, which is the, the rose gold version. So uh, one of Danny Govberg's sayings is uh, beach to tux. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why these more casual sports watches have become so popular. People, the lifestyle, want to take the watch from their beach to the tuxedo. I'm wearing a jacket and a shirt Comfort today. A jacket, I must say, and you look very handsome. Thank there. you, thank you. <laughs> And I uh, happen to be wearing the rose gold GMT Sport and it fits perfectly. And if I was at the beach, I could wear this into the water. It's a 100 meters divers. The, the watch is limited to 11 pieces with the red gold globe, or the red globe, sorry, the gold globe, I apologize, and 11 pieces with a blue globe. The globe rotates in a 24-hour cycle. There's a second time zone on the top here, like all of the GMTs, which has become a signature to the brand. And on the back, you can see the 24-hour times, the 24 time zones. Uh, the, the globe is always in titanium; otherwise, it wouldn't rotate with the movement of the of the watch. And this watch is really beautiful. I have on order for myself actually the titanium on bracelet. This one is part of my inventory. It's a pre-owned piece, but I decided to wear it with me to my trip here and, and last week in Switzerland because this is really the future of where watchmaking is going and where the brand is going. The case is also interesting because it has this curvature to the crystal and the case. And if you look at it straight on, it looks like a perfectly round watch. But any other angle, it has this shape of a uh, tonneau shape. So, almost like you yeah, have a look. Similar to, to 
like an RM, yes. um, where it lies incredibly well uh, on the wrist, very comfortable, um, flush, no gap in between. Right. And um, that gap definitely exists with a lot of watches. I think, uh, you know, here's, here's an example of one. Um, the watch is amazing. I mean, the depth of it is, is unparalleled. Um, you can get lost <laughs> looking in it. Um, but uh, And everything beautifully finished. And, and as good as again, it gets finishing. Yep. As good mm -hmm. as it gets finishing. No real dial, open so that you can enjoy all the finishing of all the movement plates. And in the sports watch, when they, uh, Grubel Fawzi launched the sports watch, there's actually a patented bridge where the hands uh, for the hours and minutes are on the top of the bridge, so the wheels that turn the hands, there's three, la uh, three layers of wheels to get to the hands instead of everything on a horizontal plane. It's exceptional. It really, really is. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for showing that. So, uh, before, we, before we go, uh, what do you think, what do you see happening now? I mean, the, the market is crazy strong. I mean, we just saw all these auction results, only watch auction, Phillips, some of these watches went for levels I never thought we would ever be at. And you and I have discussed what you think, you know, is going to happen moving forward. I mean, the market can't keep appreciating at the, at the same rate. And um, I mean, what do you see moving forward? What brands do you think uh, are going to uh, uh, strengthen more that, that have been overlooked? I mean, we've talked about that some, but what's, what's in, your, in your crystal ball with all, all of your uh, experience and exposure to all these amazing brands? I wish I had a crystal ball, but the Only Watch auction did go way beyond everybody's expectations this year, most of the watches. However, it is for a good cause. It's a great it charity. Is, right. And all the pieces that were um, donated, actually, from the watch companies were uh, unique executions. So for a collector who wants to own a unique piece, and wants to support independent manufacturers as well as some of the bigger brands, AP was, and Paddock, of course, were there. But also to support a good cause, you expect there to be good results. But the other auctions all accomplished phenomenal results. And the marketplace for the last year and a half through COVID got stronger and stronger and stronger, and we don't see any signs of uh, a pullback. I personally would like to see a little bit of a pullback talking to a few collectors recently. Um, my concern is for them, they don't find it fun anymore because it's too difficult to acquire. Almost every independent watch brand is sold out for years, the next few years at least. And Gronefeld. Gronefeld, three years. Carrie Vutelain, and I was told now it's a three year waiting list. F.P. Jorn. F.P. Jorn, I don't even know the number, but whatever yeah, it is. Years. And yeah. As we know, De Bethune is sold out till 2023. So and people want to pay deposits now to get delivery in 2023 and we don't even want to accept the deposits at the retail level because we don't know what the allocations are going to be like so for a collector it's frustrating and I think that as soon as there's some pullback drop in prices a little bit some of the speculators may fall out which could create further reduction in prices I don't think that the independent brands will go below retail because most of them are now above retail so I think that you'll see that the demand is still going to exceed the supply. Uh, in De Bethune world, we made 200 and something, call it 200 watches in 2021. And with a real push for a production increase in 2022, we're going to get to a maximum of 230 watches. Grubel Fawzi for the last 10 years has been making just around 100 watches a year. They employ 100 people. And they're going to try to push to 130, 140 watches in the coming years. So again, if there's a big demand, uh, and the supply doesn't increase accordingly, the prices should match. But from the bigger manufacturers who can and do manufacture thousands of watches, if there's a pullback in, in demand and the supply remains the same, there should be a price drop. Right. I remember you telling me that. So, Stephen, thank you so much. It was a real pleasure. Um, you know, I always, your, your passion resonates when we talk about these things. And uh, thank you for getting me independent, into independent watchmaking. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you're really the guy who, who told me uh, that I was missing out and uh, not, not following these brands and getting involved with them, so. Well, you're a good learner. You're the leader now <laughs> in the world of independent selling of watch of Trying, watches. right? Yeah, trying. And uh, thank you for having me and thank you for making me smile every day. And I love and enjoy working, as you know, with, uh, with the watches. I enjoy every day handling different pieces that come and go into my office but also the people I work with. And you are just one fun guy. Thank you for always giving me a good smile and for teasing <laughs> me and mocking me, but it's all good. All, all out of love, my friend. Exactly, we love it. Thank awesome. you. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank you for it, having Sammy. me.